a very good evening to all the brothers and sisters so in last uh, few classes we have studied about uh, church part 1 and church part 2 we have clearly understood from the scriptures uh, uh, what is the real meaning uh, of the church and we have seen that the church is not a building but it is a group of people uh, who try to live a saintly life so these are called as saints so who follow the footsteps of jesus and we also see uh, in the gospel age there is a different uh, types of christians uh, in the divine plan and uh, we see that uh, not believers are called as christians are considered as christians as per christ uh, because they are uh, good believers they believe in jesus but uh, the main uh, important thing is that uh, uh, jesus should also believe us that is very very important uh, because we see during the days of jesus many of the people who followed him 4000 5000 6000 people and sometimes the people used to trample one upon another we see that uh, they all followed jesus because they believed uh, him why if you see it is only for miracles uh, but nothing else but did jesus never uh, believed them so that's a very important thing and once uh, what happened jesus turned to the uh, big crowd and told them if any man wants to be my disciple let him first deny himself and carry the cross and follow me so last time and uh, previous to the time we saw uh, many are called and few are chosen so it is not that we have be called we be part of the called uh, is a group uh, we are need to be part of the chosen group also so who are the chosen if you see the chosen are the followers of christ now what is the difference between the believers and the followers of christ if you see the believers and christ are those who just believe in jesus only for benefit sake but who are the followers if you see the followers are the one who sacrifice uh, to the lord uh, to do his will to sacrifice uh, their privileges sacrifice the rights uh, you see sacrifice so many self interest for the lord sake so these are the ones you see uh, they are called as followers of uh, jesus and jesus clearly said if any man uh, wants to be my disciple let him deny himself carry the cross and follow me so the main thing is that deny yourself offer your bodies as a living sacrifice so it is when that we offer our bodies as living sacrifice that uh, you see god gives us the holy spirit so as soon as a man receives the holy spirit uh, Uh, many Christians uh, claim and believe that uh, they are born again, but the Bible doesn't say so. Last week we saw the difference between the born and begotten. Jesus was actually replying to the question which uh, Nicodemus asked in John third chapter. So Jesus clearly said, uh, "Until you are born, born of the water and the Holy Spirit, uh, you can't enter the kingdom of God." So if you want to enter the heavenly salvation and be part of that. Uh, you see kingdom class then we need to be born of water and born of the spirit so how do how is one born of the water how is one born of the spirit jesus clearly says in verse 8 in john 3rd chapter saying that he that is born of the spirit is like a wind so we can't see where the wind is going and coming but we can only listen so similarly the one who are born of the spirit are invisible so therefore we can't see anybody yeah, any christians who are invisible today they are all visible clearly to our naked eyes so that means uh, none of them are born so when will a person be born you see there is a process for it that's what we saw last time that once if you need to be born the first step is that you need to be begotten you see of the holy spirit and it is what god doing us now is begotten us with the holy spirit It has given us this Holy Spirit in this earthen vessel, in this old human nature. God has given this holy mind. So this holy mind, you see, the power of God, you see, that has to be fed thoroughly with the word of God. And as much as you have fed uh, with the word of God, and so much development will happen to a new creature. So ultimately, when at the birth, when the complete maturity is uh, uh, over, then only the new creature will be born. So, until such time this new creature will be in the old creature and uh, 
there will be a lot of uh, you see warfare between the old creature and the new creature last time we saw few examples how importance will be given to the worldly things uh, by the old creature but the new creature uh, will uh, resist against it and uh, there will be you see a sort of uh, uh, you see a fighting and a quarrel between them but uh, initially the old creature will be the one who is winning but uh, as the days goes on the new creature should start winning also so therefore in the bible it is called as the new man renewed of the christ so only after death we will be getting a glorious spiritual body in which we will be taken to heaven so in this earthly body will go to the dust it will be totally gone because we have exchanged this earthly life to the heavenly life therefore in first corinthians 15:50 it says that your flesh and blood cannot enter in the kingdom of god so as we can't go to the heaven in the fleshly body spiritual body is required therefore this process is required and this process is can be attained only by the church and how is it what is the process if you see jesus is our role model jesus already experienced this uh, change of nature he died as a human being but he was resurrected as a spirit being you see uh, he came uh, when the doors were locked you see he appeared to the disciples 11 times in various various ways ultimately was taken to heaven in the same spiritual body so similarly if we want to be you see faithful you see we need to be you see uh, obedient to god's words and therefore once if you are faithful only god will give us this reward of the new spiritual body therefore the bible says when you are called few are chosen and few are faithful so revelation 17:14 uh, we see that there are three categories uh, uh, so called chosen and faithful so just by being of the called class it is not at all sufficient the entire christian world is stuck here itself uh, but if you come a little further you see there are still more a uh, few better christians who are of the chosen class so if you are of the chosen class uh, is it sufficient no that is also not sufficient everyone but we need to be of the faithful class so today we are going to see from when god is selecting this uh, faithful class from when is he uh doing uh, this plan and when is is executing uh, this uh, selection of this uh, faithful class uh. so let us read uh, one verse in ephesians 114 14 sorry ephesians 14 can somebody read in ephesians 14 according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love see here it says that he has chosen us before the foundation of the world so the church is chosen before the foundation of the world so many people think that see we are all chosen before our birth even when we were in mother's womb we are selected so before the foundation of the world the church is selected so some people uh, misunderstand it in such a way that uh, there is not uh, required uh, for us to do anything because we are chosen from the mother's womb we are chosen from the foundation of the world you see so therefore there is nothing that we need to do dear brethren you see if uh, everybody were chosen before the foundation of the world individuals were chosen before the foundation of the world you see then uh, you see apostle paul why did he say that uh, i keep my body under and keep it under subjection so that uh, i should uh, you see not uh, be a cast away after preaching to so many people so let us read first corinthians 927 first corinthians 927 uh, munasita can you read but i keep under my body and bring it into subject son please that by any means when i have preached to other i myself should be a cast away very good sir see apostle paul he himself wrote in ephesians 1:4 that we are chosen from the foundation of the world then why did he say when he was chosen from the foundation of the world why did he said i keep my 
What in the subjection? Lest I be a castaway. If he is already chosen, then no need to worry at all. No. Dear brethren, you see, huh? that is not the way. So we should understand the scriptures correctly. See, if we are all chosen from the foundation of the world, why should we keep and study the Bible? Why should we spend our time in study the word of God? Why should we spend time in prayer? Why should we spend time in a holy life? We can leave all these things and live a worldly life now and live a comfortable life now. Dear brethren, why? Why it is necessary? You see, huh? if somebody is chosen from the foundation of the world, why take tension? Huh? Isn't it? Let us go and sin in the world. Let us live a luxurious life. Anyway, we are already chosen. Anyway, we are the heaven's favorite. We will definitely be of the little flock now. Huh? Is that what the scripture says? Let us read Ephesians 1 4 again for a better understanding. Read. Uh, Anil Buddhar, uh, please, Buddha, read. Buddha. Ephesians 1 4. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Mm. We are chosen before the foundation of the world for what? And to be of the heavenly pata, to be of the little flock. No, no, no. Here God says he has chosen us before the foundation of the world for what? To be holy, to be blameless. You see, to be in love, these characters, these qualities have been fixed before the foundation of the world. Not that we individuals are chosen, dear brother. These qualities of the individuals are chosen, not individual persons by name are chosen. No. These qualities chosen. You see? How? The little flock, if they want to be of the little flock, they have to have a loving life, have to have a holy life, they have to be blameless. Then only they can be part of that little flock, dear brethren. They only you can they be part of the faithful church. Let us read one more verse. Romans 8.29, brother. Romans 8.29. Uh, Sunita, oh. uh, okay, Joel, brother, read. Read, Joel, brother. For whom he did for, in, for new, he also did prejudiceness to be conformed to the image of his son that might be the firstborn among many brethren. See, he eh? predestinated. You see, predestinated means what? Even before something was created, God had already fixed it. it seems. Eh? So, he had predestinated us. What? God had already fixed the church. Yeah? If you read, clearly it says, eh? God had predestinated for what? That we should be confirmed in the image of Jesus Christ. That is the qualification which God fixed even before the foundation of the world was laid. You see, if individuals were selected before the foundation of the world, before their birth, then what was necessary to replace Judas by Paul? Anyway, he was already chosen by the foundation of the world. If we deceive or if we reject Jesus, or if he, you see, uh, uh, you see, surrender to Jesus, or if he catch holds of Jesus, what does it matter? Anyway, chosen of, before the foundation of the world. Uh, no, that is not there. Brian, uh, you see, the Judas was replaced by Paul. That itself is a clear proof that nobody is chosen before the birth. Uh, so, you are chosen, you see, we are all chosen on a certain characteristics. Uh, you see, that character, if any one of us, if we are having, then we'll be part of the chosen class. It is like this. You see, I'll tell you an example. A military selection. You see, when a military selection happens, how do they select people? You see, first of all, they put they put a list. They put the criteria. Huh? Their education. You see, then medical. Uh, you see, huh? their eyesight should be clear. Then uh, their uh, height should be this much. Their weight should be only this much. And uh, their... Uh, they should be having a, a proper correct chest, proper muscles, a biceps, triceps. You see, they should be very healthy. 
You see, these criteria, these qualifications are fixed even before the actual selection happens. Even the number is also fixed. But who comes in? Who gets into this group? It might be anybody. Everybody can get into the group. The only thing is that you need to have those qualifications which are prefixed. So anybody having those qualifications can easily be of that group. Similarly, God has fixed the qualifications and the qualities even before the foundation of the world. Not God has chosen individuals. You see, God has fixed the you see, characters. You see, like for example, high priest. Huh? High priest, uh, whom did God choose? Did God particularly choose Aaron's family? Yeah. No. God had chosen a priesthood. Levi, from the tribe of Levi. So anybody could come from Levi. It was not an issue. But they have to have that qualifications. Then only they will be part of that. Uh, you see, high priesthood. Not everybody can come and become. Just because Levi is chosen, everybody can come. No. Particular persons. But uh, who can be the particular person? Anybody from Levi. But... Uh, with certain qualifications. Similarly, you see, in the Old Testament, while choosing the high priest, there were certain qualifications. Let us read Leviticus 21, 17 to 21, brother. Um, Sunita, sister, can you read? Hmm. Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed in their generations that hath any blemish let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. See? What does he say? He should be blameless. Yeah? He should be, he should be, he should not have blemish. If anybody is having blemish, any handicapped person can't come inside. So that's a qualification. You see? Continue, sir. Next, continue, sir. Ah. For whose whatsoever man he be, he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach a blind man or a lame, or he that hath a flat nose or anything superfluous, or a man that is broken footed or broken handed mm. or crook backed or a draft. Draft. See? Or. This means no handicapped person can come. Draft means a very small person. Oh, I'm so tall. Can I come and say, no, no, you can't come. You're abnormal. You see? And uh, super fluid means what? Some people are having six fingers. Have you seen? Eh? Uh, those and all can't come. What does it signify? You see? And one who doesn't have a proper eyesight. Eh? Uh, one eye will be straight. Other eyes will be crooked. Even the, they can't be of this one. No, this is not literal. That was literal for the, those uh, priests in those days. <clears throat> but for us, it signifies an exact number, a fixed number to be a body of the Christ. Christ is our high priest. You see, and if we need to be part of that high priest class, that body numbers, the members of the body are fixed. Now, what is that number? That number is 1,44,000. Where is it given in the Bible? It's given in Revelation 14, 1. Read, brother. Revelation 14, 1. Uh, Romy, sister, can you read? What was the verse? Romans 14, 1, sister. Romans. I think Revelation 14.1. Ah, sorry. Revelation 14.1. Good, you are all awake. Alert. Then I looked and there before me was the Lamb standing on Mount Gion and with him 1,44,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. Hmm. You see, they saw one lakh forty four thousand standing upon Mount Zion, having the father's name written upon their head. It seems, sir. So, you see, now who is this one lakh forty four thousand? 
it is again given in Revelation 7 4, sister. Sister, you can read Revelation 7 4 also. Rome, sister, Revelation 7 4. Yeah. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, one like forty four thousand from all the tribes of Israel. Mm. See, here it says the lakh and forty four thousand were chosen from all the tribes of Israel. So many people think uh, that a brother it is from Israel, brother. So we don't have any, uh, you see, part in that one. It is only for Israel. But this lakh and 44,000 is given in two chapters. One is Revelation 7 chapter and Revelation 14 chapter. See, in Revelation 7 chapter, it mentions about 12 tribes. But read Revelation 14, it says they were chosen from the whole world. Revelation 14, 3. Revelation 14, 3. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read? Uh, Revelation 14, 3, brother. Hmm. And the song, uh, as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. See, one lakh and forty-four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. It doesn't say redeemed from Israel. So entire world, whole world, you see, from them, how much number is selected? Lakh and forty-four thousand. As our body members are completely fixed, we don't have three eyes, we don't have two mouths and four ears. Everything is fixed, no? So similarly, the body members of Christ are also fixed. And that number is 1,44,000. Okay. Now, why Israel name is given? You see, how many people think that brother that's Israel? You see, dear brother. And when Bible speaks about Israel, the Bible speaks about uh, two types of Israel. We need to understand. You see, the Bible says two types of Israel. One is spiritual Israel, another is fleshly Israel. So let us see who is the spiritual and fleshly Israel. Romans 9 chapter 6 to 8. Uh, Romans 9 chapter 6 to 8. Anil Budar, can you read? Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel, neither because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all, all the all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. See, what does he say? Huh? For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. What are they? How is this? This verse says, not all Israelites are Israelites, it seems. How is this possible? See, like for example, say you're all born in Nepal. Then you, who are you? You're all Nepalis. I can't come and tell you that you're not Nepalis just because you're born in Nepal. But the Bible says just because you're born in Israel doesn't mean that you become an Israel. Then what is the real meaning of Israel? See, it says, no, huh? neither because you're of the seed of Abraham, neither because you're born naturally in Abraham's uh, family, in Abraham's lineage. It doesn't mean that you are a child of Abraham. No. But the child of the promise are counted for the seed, it seems. That means, that clearly proves, just because a Jew is born in Israel or under a you see, Jewish family, you don't make a real Jew inside of God, it seems. Uh -huh. Therefore, there are two types of Israel. One is spiritual Israel, one is fleshly Israel. See, read about the fleshly Israel in 1 Corinthians 10 18. Uh, Mundan sister, read 1 Corinthians 10 18. Behold, Israel after the flesh, are not they 
with eat of the sacrifices partaker of the altar ha huh? behold israel after the flesh ha huh? underline it israel after the flesh is him sir these are what uh, fleshly israel they were eating of the literal altar sacrifices on the altar you see huh? fleshly israel now read spiritual israel first peter 2 5 first peter 2 5 uh, joel brother can you read yeah also as lively stones are building up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god by jesus christ this spiritual house that was fleshly house this is spiritual house that was a priesthood this is holy priesthood their sacrifices were given here spiritual sacrifices aha therefore ha huh, spiritual israel and fleshly israel ha huh? now for uh, fleshly israel circumcision was required circumcision ha huh? on the eighth day if a child is born circumcision has to be done but for spiritual israel no circumcision is required circumcision in the heart is required read romans second chapter 28 and 29 uh, amar brother can you read romans 8 28 and 29 brother uh, amar brother you there yes yes a uh, romans second yeah. chapter brother 28 and 29 brother from second chapter 28 and 29 yeah. a person is not a jew who is one only uh, outwardly nor is circumcision merely outward and physical no a person is a jew who is one outwardly and the circumcision is a circumcision on the heart mm, by this it clearly says circumcision should be in the heart that is a real jew well just because you have circumcision in the flesh doesn't mean that you become a jew see apostle paul is writing to whom he is not writing this letter to the jewish people he is writing to romans the gentiles and he is speaking to the real jews therefore in the bible there are fleshly israel and spiritual israel also so we are all called as spiritual israel why we are all gentiles we don't have any connection with abraham's family but even then we are children of god children of abraham galatians third chapter 7 and 8 read brother um ashish brother can you read galatians third chapter 7 and 8 ashish brother can you read Sorry, I am outside. Okay. Okay, Anil brother, can you read? Galatians, Galatians three seven eight. Know ye therefore that they which are are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham, mm. and the Scripture, mm. foreseeing that God would justify the heathen, the faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham. saying in this shall all nations be blessed okay and they that are of faith are children of abraham if we are faith of abraham then we automatically become children of abraham remember the class of seed of the woman who is the seed of the woman who is going to crush the serpent said you see we are the body members head is jesus christ so that is what we read john the baptist he was preaching to the people of israel okay read this verses in your house when you are free matthew third chapter 7 to 9 he called the people of israel as brood of vipers you see and he told oh, who has taught you the way of repentance you see don't think that uh, you have father abraham if god uh, uh, decides he can raise uh, uh, abraham's son from the very stones uh, what did he actually mean don't just think that you are because natural israel you are fleshly israel god has no choice apart from you but uh, even though you are good or bad he will choose only you no if god wants to choose uh, make somebody as abraham children even from the gentiles the stone hearted people he can make the children of uh, abraham having faith 
therefore in james also he says no abraham was not justified only by faith but faith with works so satan has faith but there is no work with him so therefore you see both the things are required so if we have the faith and work we are called the children of abraham so we are called that israel therefore you see dear brethren the lack and 44000 selection happened in the gospel age when jesus began his ministry when the holy spirit was poured upon the church at the pentecost but the first chance was given to the israel people you see god wanted to select this lack and for those from israel but as the sufficient number was not obtained from israel god turned to the gentiles let us read acts 13 chapter 46 verse brother acts 13 46 Acts thirteen forty six. Ah, Joel, brother, please read. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, "It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy an everlasting life, to we turn." to the gentiles he we turn to the gentiles just because you prove unworthy you see we are turning to the gentiles so first opportunity was given to the jewish people so there are a lot of difference a lot of similarities you see between uh, spiritual israel freshly israel and some people tell brother not like that brother the tribe name is given huh? correct no i tell the tribe name is given huh? so let us read revelation 7 chapter brother uh anybody can read revelation chapter 7 verse 4 uh, <clears throat> and 5 who can read revelation 7 chapter 4 and 5 and i heard the number of them which were sealed and there were sealed and 140 and 4000 and of all the tribes of the children of israel of the tribe tribe of juda were sealed 12000 of the tribe of reuben were sealed 12000 of the tribe of gad uh, were sealed 12000 ah see here the some people tell brother tribes name are given brother so how can i tell it is spiritual israel okay now let me ask you a question who was the first son of jacob who, who can tell who will tell the name of the first son of jacob so jacob had 12 sons yeah, we know now who is the first son who can answer joel brother anil brother ha huh? who guess romister amor brother Ah, huh? Munna sister. Okay, uh, Gopal brother, do you know the answer? Who is the first son of Jacob? Reuben brother. Ah, uh, Reuben. But if you see in Revelation, what's the order? What's the first tribe name given? Tell me, what is the name of the first tribe given? Huh? Reuben. Judah. Judah. Very good, Munna sister. Read that verse, sister. Read that verse again. Revelation seven chapter verse five. Hmm. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed two ah. thousand. First tribe is Judah. Now why? Ah, Reuben should have given first, no? But why here uh, Judah is given? Because, ah, who came from tribe of Judah? Who came from tribe of Judah? Jesus Christ. Very good, sister. Jesus Christ. Now, who is head of the church? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Therefore, his name is given first. Ah, uh -huh. therefore, the list which is mentioned in Revelation seven chapter is about spiritual Israel. See, I'll give you a homework. Genesis forty nine chapter, Revelation seven chapter. There are names are given twelve tribes name. You just compare it in your house and see. There's lot of difference in Genesis forty nine chapter Dan tribe comes there, but here in Revelation seven chapter Dan doesn't come. In Revelation forty seven chapter Manasseh the son of Joseph doesn't come. 
Revelation 7 chapter, Manasseh is son of Joseph comes here. In number 2nd chapter, again, Dan is mentioned, Joseph is deleted. But uh, here, Dan is deleted, Joseph is given. So, even in number 2nd uh, chapter, Ephraim is given, Levi is removed. But here in Revelation, it's opposite. Ephraim is removed, Levi is given. Why? Because this is speaking about spiritual Israel. We got a different study about this uh, names and characters of these 12 tribes. God willing, we will see sometime. Okay? But uh, this is a clear proof uh, that, uh, you see, this is speaking about spiritual Israel. Jesus being the head of the church. Okay. Now, let us see what is the qualities of the lakh and 44,000 related flock. So, read Revelation 14.4. Revelation 14.4. Um, Sunita, sister, can you read it? Revelation 14.4. These are they which were not def defiled with woman, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb with whithersoever whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Mm -hmm. so this is the qualification. What is the qualification? First, they tell, these are, uh, they who were never defiled with the woman. What is the meaning of the woman? That means they are not married. Uh, eh? Some people, they take it literally eh? and they don't get married at all. This is not speaking about literal marriage. Everybody thinks that, oh, if you don't marry her, Jesus will marry in heaven. He doesn't have any work uh, to get married there. Dear brethren, this is speaking of what? Uh, not having relationship with a woman. Who is a woman in the Bible? You see, the true church is called as woman in the Bible. Correct now? Read 2 Corinthians 11.2. 2 Corinthians 11.2. Uh, Romeo's sister, can you read 2 Corinthians 11.2? Can you read? I am jealous for um, you with a, a godly jealousy. Um, I promised um, you to one, um, one, one husband to Christ so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. Very good, sir. Okay, so there if you see, it says the church is engaged to Christ. So to, he may present the church to Christ as a pure virgin. So that is the virgin, the true church. Who doesn't mingle with the world. You see, but in Revelation 17, chapter 5, there is other church. Who is a prostitute. You see, let us read Revelation 17, 5. Uh, Munna sister, can you read Revelation 17, 5? And upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of Herlords and abomination of the earth. Uh, see, mother of Herlords. You see, that means she has committed fornication. This is the false church. So, the true church always stands for the truth and never has any relationship with the false church who speak from the false doctrines. And uh, this was what, what does it say, Revelation 44? These are they, those who are not defined with a woman, means they are not defined with a false church. Second thing, he says, they are virgins. Virgins means what? We read the parable of the virgin, wise virgin, foolish virgin. And we will take up all the studies in the higher classes as uh, days goes on. Uh, Matthew 25th chapter, verse 3 and verse 4. Huh? There were uh, 10 virgins who went and met to the Lord. But the uh, foolish virgins had uh, the oil only in the lamp. But the wise virgins took the oil in the lamp as well as in the vessel. You see, what happened there? The bridegroom tarried and the lamps all went off. In the midnight, there was a cry. You see, behold the bridegroom. So everybody began to trim the lamp. The foolish virgins did not have sufficient of oil. The lamps they went off. So they went to the market to buy it and come. By the time they came, the dough was lost. But the wise virgins, they had oil in the vessel. They put it in the lamp and began to shine brightly. So who are they? They are virgins means what? They are wise virgins, not foolish virgins. So, 
just by, just by being a holy Christian, a very good Christian, it doesn't uh, work out. Uh, we need to be wise. We need to have understanding of God's will in our mind also. So we need to have the Holy Spirit uh, in our uh, life. Uh, that is the uh, uh, meaning of virgins. Then it also says, these are they which followed the Lamb wherever he went. What does it mean? These are the faithful followers of Christ. You see, many are called, few are chosen, but only few are faithful until death. We need to follow the footsteps of our Lord Master. You see, and be faithful till our death. And it also says, they were redeemed from among men. These are chosen from all over the world, not from Israel. It says that these are the first fruits of the God. First fruits means what? The first fruits of Holy Spirit. The God has poured the Holy Spirit upon the church in a Pentecost. And this is the first result of that Holy Spirit which God has poured it in the, you see, dear brother, and this is the first fruits. And you remember the sacrifice of Abel and Cain. You see, both offer the sacrifices, but God accepted Abel's sacrifice. Why? Because he offered the first the best of the fruits. So these are the first and the best of the fruits. Therefore, this is a little flock. And read Revelation 14.3. Revelation 14.3. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read Revelation 14.3? And their song as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could Learn that song, but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. See, they sung a new song which nobody can sing, it seems. What brother, no, Joel, brother, even you can't sing uh, this song. Uh. Yeah, they say nobody can sing, uh, not even Michael Jackson, uh, not even, not even uh, Lata Mangeshkar, not even anybody, Ronald Bonke, nobody, nobody can, uh, Don Moyne also cannot sing this song. Uh. Now, which is this song? Uh? Uh -huh. This is not a literal song. This is the biblical song. What is the song? Read Revelation 15.3. Anil Buddha, read Buddha. Revelation 15.3. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy wor works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. See, they sing, they sing the song of Moses and the Lamb. What, are they? Now what is the song of Moses? Which is the song of Lamb? Huh? You see, Moses means what? Moses means huh? Old Testament. You see, Jesus means New Testament. So, the song of Moses means the entire Old Testament. The song of the Lamb means the New Testament. So this Old Testament and New Testament has to be synchronized properly and beautifully, harmoniously, it has to be played in a piano, you see, in a harp. Then how it will be? It will be a beautiful song. This song, only the lakh and 44,000 can sing from the Bible. Take the verses here a little, there a little. Old Testament, New Testament. Search the scriptures and expound it clearly. Explain the divine plan clearly so that others understand uh, this is possible only from the lakh and 44,000 uh, other people can't do. Therefore, it says only these can sing, not everybody. Okay. Now read Revelation 14.5. Revelation 14.5. Sunita, can you read? And in their mouth was found no guilt, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Ah, you see, in their mouth, what was not there? The kaili was not there. No fault was found in Israel. So, only the truth. You see, if they speak, they will speak only the truth. Not only truth of the word of God, truth about each and every matter. They are without fault. You see, they are blameless before God. That is holiness. That is purity. That is love. This is the qualification that God has chosen before the foundation of the world. Just imagine, dear brethren, such a precious quality. Can it be found among every Christians? 
I am sure not. Have you seen such qualities fulfilled Christians? These are the character of a true Christian which God desires. The faithful Christians. Hence in the Bible, the death of this lakh and 44,000 is called as precious in God's sight. Imagine God who is the creator of this uh, entire universe. He is the master. Can anything be precious to his sight? Yes. There is only one thing that is precious. Not the gems, diamond, golds, nothing. He says, these saints, the faithful saints are my precious thing. Read Psalm 116, 15. Muna sister, can you read Psalm 116, verse 15? Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Hmm. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. You see, precious. There's nothing that is precious. He has created everything. He can create everything. But... He only and alone can never create a lakh and 44,000 because he needs the support of the lakh and 44,000. God alone can create, cannot create it. Therefore, this is very precious in God's safety. Therefore, this class is not at over. You see, the selection of the lakh and 44,000 is not at over. That door is still open. The crowns are vacant. The seats are vacant. God is searching. So many people, just imagine, huh? you were living such a far place, you see, outside India, in Kathmandu, in any remote place, a rural place, you see, in any small road, go in the small streets, in small house, you see, huh? on the rooftop or in a small gully, small road, who knew about you, dear brother? We had no contact, we had no relationship. Who has called you? God has called you. We are uh, his stewards, isn't it? So God has called you. Why? Because God knows that crown can be attained by you. You can win the prize. That is the reason God has called you. Otherwise, dear brethren, such a far place, it is not at all possible that truth can go to you. If truth is reaching to you, if your eyes are opening, if your ears are opening, that means God is working in you. Why? Because he wants all of you to sit on the throne and be part of the lack and 44,000 brethren. So this is not at over. So once the lack and 44,000 is over, immediately, what will happen? Immediately, the kingdom will be established on earth. Israel will get peace. You see? Now read Romans 11, chapter 25-26. Romans 11, chapter 25, 26. Gopal brother, can you read? Sure, brother. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is the happen to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be coming. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, they shall come out of Sion, the deliverer and shall turn away on godliness from Jacob. See, blindness in part is happened to Israel. When? Until the fullness of Gentiles be coming, until the number of lack and fullness is completed from Gentiles. So, door is still open. God is waiting. Now, do you all want to be of the lack and 40,000 or not? Huh? Do you all want to be of the part of little flock or not? Yes, brother. Yes, very good. Yes, very good. Very good, Joel brother. Very good, Rome is the Amar brother. Good, Anil brother. Sunita sir. You want to be of that uh, lakh and forty-four thousand? Yes, brother. Yes. Very good, Munna sister. Yes, brother. Very good. That is the reason the brethren are putting lot of efforts. You see. Gopal brother, Ashish brother, everybody, you see, dear brother, because this truth is given by God. We are all human agencies. That's all. You see, the food is ordered by God. We are stewards. We are supplying it. Why? Because that precious price to sit with our Lord on the throne along with Him and rule for a thousand years, dear brother, to be like with Him. To be like him 
to be with him this opportunity you won't get again and again there is a once for a offer to say dear brother therefore let us utilize this one dear brother let us let us live a life which is faithful to him and live a life which is pleasing to him you see the characters you remember huh those are virgins they were never defiled with woman there was no guile find in his mouth and they were faithful followers of the lamb whither so they went uh, they sang the beautiful song of the moses and the lamb the old testament new testament how many people are you witnessing just imagine the truth you have been listening to almost nearly 4 to 5 months you see have you ever heard this truth somewhere else i'm sure no if you have heard this truth and if you really have the joy you see we should be playing the song of moses and the lamb to whom to the people the christians who don't know it is our responsibility to go and uh, you see uh, proclaim the gospel dear brethren may the lord add his blessings so any doubts any questions if you have you can ask next week we will meet again